Welcome to the Carl Jackson Show, your daily dose of freedom. Today's show is brought to you by MyPillow.com. We have post-Super Tuesday coverage. We'll be talking about that. Uh, the Republic get uh, delegates that are needed. Trump secured a lot of them on Super Tuesday. He had a dominating performance, as did Joe Biden. Even though he lost uh, the territory of Samoa, they will not be voting in a general election. Nikki Haley is out. Uh, she will not be continuing on after uh, having a bad performance on Super Tuesday. Uh, it, obviously, this was the writing was already on the wall, but Trump dominated 14 out of the 15 states. Uh, Michelle Obama will not be running. Kirsten Cinema is not seeking re-election, and J. Christian Adams of the Public Interest Legal Foundation is going to be joining us to talk about all the Trump cases and the impact they might have on the 2024 election. Stay tuned. We'll be back with the Carl Jackson Show. Welcome to the Carl Jackson Show. This is your special post Super Tuesday coverage. We've got a great show for you today. Uh, Jay Christian Adams, founder of the Public Interest Legal Foundation, will be joining us to discuss some of the cases against former President Donald Trump that the left is using, in my opinion, to persecute the man uh, and using for election interference purposes and are destroying the justice system and the rule of law in the United States of America. He'll be joining us to discuss those cases, to clarify uh, some of those cases, and to discuss what Republicans can do as far as election integrity is concerned leading up to 2024. So you want to make sure that you stay tuned for that. But first, let's deal with the issue at hand. Obviously, Super Tuesday was a big night for former President Donald Trump. Also, it was a big night, to be fair, for Joe Biden. These two are going to be the nominees of their party. Uh, there is no doubt about it at this particular time. The Republican uh, needs 1,215 delegates to become the nominee. 865 were up for grabs for Republicans yesterday, whereas the Democrats need 1,968 delegates uh, to become the nominee. And on Super Tuesday, there were 1,420 uh, delegates up for grabs on Super Tuesday for the Democrat Party. Nikki Haley has bowed out of the race, clearing the way for the uh, clearing the way for a Trump Biden rematch. Uh, none of the other candidates on the Democrat side gave Biden a real contest, with the exception of a no name in Samoa uh, that won uh, that won the territory of Samoa. Uh, but uh, Samoa will not be able to vote in the general election. However, they can vote in the primary. So that was a knock on Joe Biden. Also, there were there was a protest vote uh, against Joe Biden for his hand of the Israel-Hamas war, but make no mistake about it, those lemmings will come back to Joe Biden or the ones that don't will sit home. Uh, so uh, that's, a, that, that's a play that I wouldn't worry about, uh, that I wouldn't focus on if I were Republicans. Uh, sadly, a lot of the people on the left that vote for the Democrat Party today or our lemmings. I mean, let, let's face it. Otherwise, Joe Biden would not be uh, the nominee. Uh, let me deal with this again real quick. Nikki Haley has bowed out. Now, Nikki Haley has been making this argument or has made the argument that uh, if she got a one on one with Trump, uh, that uh, she would be able to prevail. And that just that simply did not happen. And as a matter of fact, the cue was early on. Uh, when Governor DeSantis was the best challenger that Trump had, uh, and then after Iowa, he bowed out after a showing, after a, uh, a after a not so great showing. Uh, he got second place, defeating uh, Nikki Haley, who came in third place. Uh, but at that point in time, Governor Ron DeSantis realized the money would dry up. He decided to bow out and offer his support uh, to the uh, to Donald Trump or to endorse Donald Trump as a nominee, saying that he didn't want to go back to the days of the Nikki Haley, the establishment style. Uh, politicians running the Republican Party. So that is where we stand with that. You had Nikki Haley, again, trying to make the argument that if she got one on one with Trump, she could do it. But that just never came to fruition. In Iowa, again, she placed third and New Hampshire, which was her best shot. Um, she lost by a significant Im uh, amount. Uh, and then you guys might recall the Nevada primary where you're not awarded any delegates. And a couple of days later, they have a caucus where the delegates are rewarded after the caucus. But uh, she w she wasn't even a part of the caucus, if you will. But in the primary, she lost second place 
uh, to uh, to nobody, to literally nobody. The contestant was named, because there was no contestant, named nobody. And Nikki Haley lost there. It was an embarrassing showing. And then she, despite all of that, she decided that she would continue on and she would go on to South Carolina uh, to try her luck, so to speak, there. She got walloped in her own state by 20 points. And, and listen, this is a free country. And, and if people want to vote for Nikki Haley, they're free to vote for Nikki Haley. But it became very clear early on that Nikki Haley did not have a pathway to victory. Uh, but there were plenty of donors uh, that had Trump derangement syndrome that decided to continue uh, to fund her campaign. But I believe that started. Uh, it, listen, I think it came to a screeching halt, frankly, as of and not Super Tuesday, but as of Monday, with the Supreme Court decision to keep Trump on the ballot in Colorado. And obviously that permeated through all of the left wingers that were trying to keep uh, Trump off the ballot and other states. All of that became null and void. Again, we'll be speaking to uh, our guest shortly about that. Jay Christian Adams, who actually played he and his legal foundation, uh, Public Interest Legal Foundation, played an instrumental role in that case, uh, so you uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that interview. But it's done for Nikki Haley. Uh, Trump dominated 14 out of the 15 states, uh, so he could secure the nomination by early as next Tuesday, March 12th. And I believe he'll do uh, just that again. Biden had some protest votes that were cast against him. Uh, but nonetheless, listen, those lemmings will always go back home. Uh, so I wouldn't put much stock into that. I do want to share this before I give you a few more takeaways uh, from the uh, from the race. Uh, Michelle Obama, for all of, all of you that thought Michelle Obama, I never thought Michelle Obama was an option, uh, you know, just because she and her husband, they, they, they just wait, they, they make way too much money now. There's no need uh, to endure public scrutiny when you're making tons of money on the side, when you essentially have a say in the current administration uh, there, there's just simply no need to do so. Uh, and so she has come out, her communications director at least, and said, listen, guys, it's not happening. I'm not running. I have no interest in becoming uh, the presidential uh, candidate for the Democrat Party. So I don't suspect that'll happen. Gavin Newsom, uh, if Gavin Newsom were to become the nominee, uh, Joe Biden could effecti effectively hand his delegates over to Gavin Newsom. I don't think that's going to happen at this point uh, because they've already passed a couple of points where, where, where it will make it extremely difficult uh, for Gavin Newsom uh, to put in the work needed to win the election. Uh, but it could happen, you know, with, uh, with Joe Biden's help, uh, with Joe Biden's health, excuse me, uh, you know, uh, stranger things have happened. Uh, but right now, it looks like it, it is going to be Biden and Trump, the rematch for the 2024 nomination. Also, in big news, this was very important, I thought, Kirsten Cinema. Now, uh, Kirsten Cinema, she is the senator, independent senator. Again, she uh, she decided to go independent. I believe it was in 2022. Uh, she wanted to work across the aisle. She wanted to be a maverick uh, in the Senate, uh, but she is not going to uh, she is not seeking reelection. Uh, she's been having a dismal, you know, fundraising uh, fundraising efforts. She hasn't been able to raise much money. And in her opinion, the extreme right and the extreme left are the ones that are running the show in Washington, D.C. And I would argue against that. I do believe the extreme left is. I don't know what an extreme right is. I mean, this is a narrative that the left makes up. I mean, what's extreme about the Republican Party? We like the rule of law. We like babies. We like free speech. We like keeping more of our hard earned money instead of giving it to a government that blows it uh, and spends money like they're like they're drunken sailors. We like uh, we like a you know a closed border. We like a strong military uh, that isn't filled with cultural Marxists uh, trying to indoctrinate our soldiers. We like energy independence. Uh, we like a merit and we like education. I don't understand what's extreme about those issues, uh, but that is the narrative in Washington D.C. Uh, listen, I appreciate there were times where Kirsten Cinema stood strong against the radicals in her party, uh, but uh, she's just not going to be able to go forward. So that is going to be a race between Carrie Lake versus Ruben Gavin. Alago, which will be uh, the Democrat, uh, uh, the Democrat competition there. And listen, this is not a foregone conclusion for Republicans. Remember, Carrie Lake ran as governor and 
Unfortunately, whatever you thought of that race, she lost. Uh, she didn't become governor. Uh, so this is an opportunity for her to become senator. But unfortunately, uh, election integrity efforts in Arizona have not been uh, have not been that great. All right. But uh, also, here's what Democrats are fearing. Listen, uh, polling for Biden has not been great. And and I, I don't know if the polls will remain as they are, uh, but many people are not happy with Joe Biden on the left. As a matter of fact, 10 percent of people polled in a New York Times poll uh, said that in, they voted for Joe Biden. They will they will now be switching uh, to Donald Trump. So that is yet to be seen. Uh, there were other takeaways in the race yesterday, many of which I will not be able to get to, but I do want to share some of uh, some of them. Listen, there is an excellent opportunity in the state of um, in the state of California for Steve Garvey. Steve Garvey has prevailed in that jungle primary. He will be facing off against Adam Schiff in November. Guys, this is an opportunity uh, to bring some sanity to the state of California. I wish Steve Garvey all the best. Make sure you donate to his campaign. Uh, that'll be absolutely uh, that'll be absolutely fascinating uh, to watch. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, Nikki Haley's que uh, future remains in, uh, uh, in question uh, as well. Uh, the North Carolina races, that's going to be exciting. Uh, you have a Democrat Governor Roy Cooper that was term limited, uh, but now you have uh, Republican Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson that's going to be facing off against the Democrat there. Uh, this guy worked in a, a furniture, as a furniture manufacturer uh, just a short time ago. So just some interesting takes. Anyway, guys, we'll be back with our guest, J. Christian Adams of the Public Interest Legal Foundation. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Welcome to the Carl Jackson Show, guys. We are, uh, listen, it, it was a big night yesterday. Obviously, it was Super Tuesday. 15 states decided or uh, who they wanted for the Republican nominee, uh, as was the same for the Democrat Party, overwhelmingly Trump winning, overwhelmingly Biden winning. Obviously, you had uh, Vermont that went in Nikki Haley's favor, uh, but she's going to be dropping out as of, to uh, as of today. Also, uh, Samoa went in another gentleman's favor against Joe Biden, the incumbent, which I found really strange. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, listen, I, I think the the race is set for November, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to circle back to that. I want to introduce you to uh, my guest here. He is Jay Christian Adams. He's with the Public Interest uh, Legal Foundation, uh, and Jay is joining me to talk about some of these court cases uh, that Trump is facing leading up to the 2024 election. Jay, welcome back to the Carl Jackson Show. Uh, hey, Carl. Hey, Jay, listen, I mean, I'm sorry, Christian, I'm going to call you Christian. I asked Jay before we went on air, what should I call him? Because I've been calling him Jay every time I've interviewed him. And he said Christian. And I'm like, man, uh, what a novel idea. So anyway, Christian, welcome back to the program. I really appreciate you joining us. For those of you that don't know, uh, Christian worked as a uh, prosecutor, federal, a federal prosecutor, right? I was uh, in the voting section at the United States Department of Justice uh, from 05 to 10. Okay, and you guys may or may not recall, uh, but he was the whistleblower uh, that called out the Obama administration when you saw these, uh, you, you may recall, the Black Panthers that were sitting out in front of uh, voting areas. I forget which city or state in particular, trying to intimidate voters. Uh, and it was uh, Jay Christian Adams uh, that blew the whistle on that. And and, uh, and and listen, I mean, he, he took the arrow. So this is why I absolutely love uh, his work. You know what type of work you're going to get with this guy. You know his integrity. Uh, let's let's deal with this. Yesterday, uh, obviously, Super Tuesday occurred, Christian, but I honestly believe the race for Nikki Haley was over the day before. And the reason why I'm saying that is because of the co uh, the uh, the Supreme Court's decision, the 9-0 ruling against the Colorado Supreme Court's ruling to keep Trump off the ballot. Let me get your comment on that. Yeah, it's. It, I got to tell you, it's it's not surprising. Uh, it it nine nothing. It was not a difficult question of law. We filed an amicus brief in that case. Uh, the Public Interest Legal Foundation did, 
And it made it very clear to me that these were not complicated issues, which raises the question of who is it that dragged the country through this? Namely, people like Jenna Griswold, the Colorado Secretary of State, Judge Ludig, who goes on CNN talking about how meritorious this theory was. All these people were wrong. It was not a close call. And the Supreme Court doesn't often speak with a unanimous voice. It's called per curiam. It's Latin, per curiam. But they did in this case because they all spoke out of one voice uh, that you can't remove Trump from the ballot. A state official cannot. Okay, so uh, Christian, let me let me ask you this then, because right away you had Representative uh, Jamie Raskin that came out, uh, and obviously he's a big time leftist. And and let me make sure um, uh, he came out right away and he said, "Listen." Um, he is working on a bill that will create a pathway to disqualify candidates, stating that actually what the Supreme Court did is good news uh, because it did not challenge the Colorado courts finding that Trump engaged in insurrection. He went on to say rather the Supreme Court ruled against Colorado on the basis that it is Congress, not the states, that has the power to enforce Section 3 of the 14th Amendment against federal officials and candidates. Now, I'm not an attorney, but when I heard this initially, I'm like, OK, this is a narrative that the left just wants to keep going all the way till Election Day. Democrats aren't running the House. Uh uh, you know, the Republican Party is. But is there any legitimacy to what he's saying? Is there a legal venue for them to challenge or continue to challenge this uh, this this decision? No, because the Supreme Court made it very clear uh, that the Constitution sets the qualifications for president. The closest that it comes is whether or not the Congress could step in and declare Trump an insurrection. Of course, he was acquitted of that by the U.S. Senate. So it kind of seems to me like they've already done that uh, and they've already resolved that. But, hey, if, if, if Representative Raskin wants to keep, uh, you know, beating a dead horse, then, you know, he's very good at that. He's very zany. Uh, he, he is one of the quirkier members of Congress. And he also has an acute case. Uh, he's been diagnosed with uh, Trump derangement syndrome. And so <laughs> I, I don't suspect he's going to stop anytime soon because it's sort of like other diseases. Once you catch it, you can't get rid of it. And it just takes you over and, and, and dominates your life and, and causes so much pain for, for Representative Raskin. Yeah, I mean, this this guy is absolutely uh, bat crazy in my opinion, but sadly, he seems to be uh, effective uh, effective for uh, for the left. Now, obviously, this uh, uh, this nine zero ruling uh, with the Supreme Court to uh, to keep Trump or restore Trump's name uh, to the ballot. I mean, obviously, other states were trying to follow suit. That squashes it for every state going forward, does it not? Yeah, every state, every official, every office, even for Congress. Uh, there was a, a rumbling to try to disqualify some members of Congress based on January 6th. And the Supreme Court ruling forecloses that also. It's every federal candidate, no state election official can remove them from the ballot. And just for the sake of, of, of clarity, again, I'm speaking with Jay Christian Adams. Um, he is the founder of the Public Interest Legal Foundation. Where can people find you online real quick, Christian, so they can support your work? Publicinterestlegal.org. All right. Public Interest Legal, uh, public interest legal dot, uh, dot org is the place you go uh, to find, uh, find him and find out what his organization is. Uh, find out what his organization is up to. But all right, so this stuff with with, with Trump, there's no doubt that it's uh, that it's going to continue. Here's here's let, let me let me ask you this because there's several cases out there. Are there any cases against Trump that you're concerned about leading up to 2024, where you see it can pose a problem? Uh, to the Trump administration or to the Trump campaign. Yeah. So if I, look, if I if someone said go rank these cases in order of merit, uh, at the bottom of the rankings, I would put the all the New York cases, the business law, the valuation of real real estate uh, nonsense. I mean, that's just it, it's ridiculous that those cases even got brought. Uh, one step above them on the top ten of merit would probably be the Georgia case. Uh, that case is totally now tainted by the behavior of the prosecutors. 
So it's in close competition for the bottom uh, of the merit rankings uh, with the New York cases. Probably, if again, if I had to rank them from most meritorious to least, the documents case uh, um, is probably at the top of the list. Uh, I don't think the ins- you know the election interference federal case is at the top. I think it would have to be the uh, the, the documents case probably is the one that has the most merit. Hmm. Okay, so uh, that's I mean that's interest and that's interesting to me, and I'll I, I'll, I'll tell you why. And I I understand why you're saying that, but I'm I'm curious about the president's ability to be able to, I, I mean, isn't this something that presidents do? Uh, don't they have the right to go back and forth with the uh, National Archives and say, yeah, I'm keeping this or, you know, you take that, so on, et cetera. I mean, hasn't that been done? Barack Obama, George W. Bush, am, am I am I missing something? Okay, so let's, no, you're not missing something. Um, but don't forget, this is a multi-pronged case. And part of the documents case involves obstruction of justice. Okay. And and the subpoena that went uh, to the you know the, that world seeking documents and then seeking tapes of you know the cameras showing people destroying and moving documents uh, th- there were there was allegedly in the complaint uh, in the in the various criminal charges accusations that individuals obstructed justice after the subpoenas were were delivered and that's an entirely different matter than whether or not you kept documents. You know, whether or not you had a right to keep them doesn't mean you have a right to obstruct justice when you're asked for them. That's why I rank it at the highest. I'm not saying anybody's guilty, uh, but if I had to rank, if I had to rank the merit of these cases, the documents case and the obstruction charges would be at the top. Okay, no, that that is a fair point. I mean, that is a great clarification uh, for those of you that are tuning in. Again, I'm speaking to J. Christian Adams. Uh, you can find them at uh, public in, uh, publicinterestlegal.org. Is that correct, Christian? Publicinterestlegal.org. All right, publicinterestlegal.org. Uh, and, uh, and again, he does, I mean, he does great work, motor voter laws, all this kind of stuff. I was just perusing through the website a little earlier before he came on. Uh, so make sure you guys follow him. Let me let me ask you this real quick. And, and uh, Christian is going to stay on with us for another segment. We only have 30 seconds left here. Hunter Biden, here's a headline. Hunter Biden helped hire aides who mishandled Joe's classified documents. Why aren't they getting the same scrutiny? Well, look, uh, this, you know, Maybe they are. I mean, don't forget uh, that that the department uh, basically recollected those documents, as I understand it, out of the garage next to the Corvette. Imagine if there had been a subpoena by the Justice Department against Biden to turn over the documents. Christian, let's let's leave it there. We'll return after the break. The Carl Jackson Show. We'll be back in a few. All right. Welcome back to the Carl Jackson Show. Again, I'm joined by my guest, Jay Christian Adams. Publicinterestlegal.org is where you can go uh, to find him. He is the founder of Public Interest Legal Foundation, uh, and they were instrumental uh, in this Supreme Court uh, case or uh, the Supreme Court case where it was ruled in uh, the Supreme Court ruled in Trump's favor nine to nothing, uh, which is almost unheard of when it comes to the Supreme Court, where Colorado, the Colorado Supreme Court um, went forward to kick Trump off of the ballot, which is absolutely uh, insane to me. We were talking about Hunter Biden uh, before we went to the break. We were talking about the document cases and Jay Christian Adams here was kind of ranking the cases, if you will, because, listen, there's no doubt about it. uh, In my opinion, uh, what what the left is going to continue to do because they don't have a viable candidate in Joe Biden. His policies have been disastrous. The guy is obviously not all there, cognitively uh, speaking. So all they're going to do is try to make you hate Trump and try to make you believe that this is a criminal uh, that is running for uh, running for office. All the while, this is projection because, in my opinion, Joe Biden is the real criminal uh, using his son. Hunter Biden to enrich the family. And before we went to the break, um, Jay began to uh, uh, opine on this headline from the New York Post uh, that is out uh, today. Uh, Hunter Biden helped hire aides who mishandled Joe's classified documents. And I asked him, why 
aren't the Bidens getting the scrutiny that Trump is? And he began to answer before we were cut off uh, by the hard break. So if you could go ahead and answer that, uh, Christian, I would certainly appreciate it. Sure. Look, I can't account for why they're not getting scrutiny. I don't know what that scrutiny would be. It's not always public when you get scrutiny. Maybe okay. there is, maybe there isn't. These are fascinating reports. Um, I will tell you, if anything, uh, I think temperature has gotten so hot here that the DOJ, the DOJ folks working on this, if I was still at the Justice Department, I would be extra careful to give a lot of scrutiny, right? Like I wouldn't want to be criticized for not giving scrutiny. Um, but I can't account for it, right? This is, I don't know all the facts. I don't have any idea. I do know that the whole thing has taken a wild, crazy turn. Why Hunter Biden would be involved, I have no idea. It's bizarre. Uh, it's, you know, it's just, the, the stories keep getting crazier. Yeah. Yeah, they absolutely do. Let me let me do this. It, it, it's been a while, but when special counsel Robert Hur came out his uh, with his report, I just want to clarify this for the audience because everybody got caught up on the uh, you know, what he said, basically, listen, uh, th this guy would be a sympathetic figure in front of a jury, uh, so on, et cetera. But but to me, uh, the bigger issue, Christian, was that a special counsel, Robert Hur, uh, essentially said, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there's enough evidence to prosecute Joe Biden. But because of his senility, I don't want to go forward with with the prosecution. Have you heard of anything like that in your days with the DOJ? Yeah. I, yes. Um, okay. So here, here's here's how this shows up. Okay. Um, it's sort of funny how you presented it. Um, the the a, a prosecutor has to assess has to assess the likelihood of a conviction and bringing a charge. That's just part of the process. And at the Justice Department, that process is even going to be more robust than in most counties, obviously more robust than in Fulton County, Georgia. Uh, and so a prosecutor has to assess the defendant's sympathetic uh, nature, uh, you know, where the jury is, all that kind of thing. And I got to tell you, the fact that you're a doddering uh, old man who's under a criminal investigation actually is relevant. Okay. Uh, and, and so, you know, you can't, you're going to have a hard time prosecuting uh, somebody take take the bizarre criminal case of Ron Jeremy out in California. Right. OK, not everybody's going to know who Ron Jeremy is. And I'm kind of reluctant to get into who he is. But here's this reprehensible yeah. guy. Right. Who's charged with, you know, 50 or 60 criminal sexual assaults. And they're not going to prosecute him because he's like wacko now. He's like totally in dementia uh, you know, white hair, go Google Ron Jeremy, current photo, you'll see. And so they're just not going to prosecute the guy. So mm -hmm. there's there's a I'm not saying it always should mean you don't get prosecuted, but it's something that a, a prosecutor has to consider. OK, and that that is a that is a fair point. Let me ask you this. Um, do you suspect uh, that Robert Hur was perhaps uh, what are, uh, eager uh, to put off the information that Joe Biden was mentally incompetent to uh, to stand trial. I, I mean, do do you think yeah. that was a jab at all, or is, this is this is a guy that's just doing the work uh, that he was summoned to do? Okay, let's start with the first principle: a prosecutor has to assess the def potential defendant, and. That would be part of the assessment, whether or not somebody seems so bewildered uh, on the stand on in an issue that involves a measure of bewilderment. Right. Like, did you know you were doing this or not? Uh, and that's got to go in the memo. It wasn't it wasn't, in my view, some gratuitous jab. It was part of the analysis. And the fact that the memo got out and and I don't know the circumstances of the release, whether you know, it was a leak or whether it was uh, intentional, I don't know, or, or required. I mean, it could have been all three of these possibilities. Uh, but that stuff in the memo is absolutely standard operating procedure. OK. All right. That's fair. And and honestly, that is uh, th that is good to hear. You, I mean, you you want uh, you want fair prosecution. I don't want a dual justice system. I feel like 
Unfortunately, that's what we have with uh, Jack Smith. That is my uh, that is my opinion. And frankly, I don't even feel like it's a dual justice system. I feel like it's go after anybody uh, that's on the right uh, with this particular administration. And if you happen to be um, if you uh, you know, if you happen to be on the left, then uh, they're going to turn a blind eye uh, to whatever you do. There's a couple of cases out there I won't get into because I'm not sure of your familiarity with them, uh, Jay Christian Adams, but uh, Steve Baker of the Blaze, who was uh, literally uh, reporting during the January 6th riots that's now being uh, bullied, it seems to me, by the DOJ after uh, he releases information that uh, some of these U.S. Capitol Police lied under under oath. I mean, so I, I, I can go on with several stories, but uh, but I won't. I do want to I do want to get to uh, I do want to get to this. Um when it comes to the civil fraud case in New York, you did rank them and you were like, that's the least serious. Uh, but also, I want to get to Fannie Willis, if you will, um, in just a second here. But this civil fraud trial, give us give us your take on that, because obviously it is an attempt, in my opinion, to bankrupt Donald Trump uh, and hurt his ability to be able to campaign going forward. But uh, talk to us about what kind of damage can a case like this 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 do? Do you see any legitimacy to uh, that that case whatsoever with Judge Ingeron, uh the AG, Letitia James of New York uh, at all? Well, start with what it's all about. It's about valuation of assets. And I think assets tied to real estate, which, look, anybody who's ever tried to sell a house or anybody who's had to get an appraisal for property or anybody who's wanted to buy a house knows that uh, what an asset is valued at is a fluid number. There's no, you know, ultimate answer. It's what the market will will bear. And Trump was doing what every seller does, right? Or everybody applying for a loan does and hope that their assets are valued as highly as possible. Yep. You know, when the appraiser comes, you don't have broken windows. You 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 want your appraisal to be high. And 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 so that's the core of this stupid New York case. Uh, is an appraisal and of, of a business. So what can happen? Well, what can happen is what New York does best. It drives businesses out of New York, right? Yeah. That's what can happen is it could obliterate the Trump uh, business in New York because of its general control over corporate filings, over a variety of things. My message to anybody in New York is to get out. <laughs> Same. Right? I mean, there's people in the conservative movement who still have their operations and headquarters in New York. It's time to leave. Go to South Carolina. Go to Florida. Uh, go to even Virginia. It's, it's a be- You do not have officials in these other states who will try to run you into oblivion like they do in New York. Yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you there. Do you listen? Will Will they be able to collect on this? I, I am concerned about them bankrupting the man. Obviously, this sets a precedent, in my opinion. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong in that sense. I mean, you, you tell me. But will they be able to collect, or, or is this just a ploy before the 2024 election, and then afterwards, uh, you know, Trump can appeal, appeal this. Yeah, I don't see there's my people, lawyers who put all their faith in appeals usually lose both of the trial court and the appeal. You got to win down below. It, it's not I, I've learned that of practicing law over 30 years is you can't just say I'm going to appeal this and win. Uh, so, look, yeah, we're running out of time. Look, I don't know. I think it's a, a scheme to make them look bad. That's what it was the whole time. And that's what they tried to do. The judge actually came off looking worse than President Trump did. Yeah, I absolutely agree uh, with you. Listen, we've uh, we've only got 30 seconds left in this block. Uh, Christian, I'm going to ask you if you're available to stay because I still want to get to uh, to Fannie Willis, Fannie Willis or whatever you want to call. Do you have are you able to stick with us for another segment? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, all right. So we'd love to do that again. uh, I'm speaking with my guest, Jay Christian Adams. Uh, This is the uh, day after Super Tuesday where Nikki Haley got her butt kicked uh, and Joe Biden prevailed, too, as the nominee. So it is going to be a Trump and Biden rematch going forward. We'll be back with more after the break. Stay tuned. All right. Welcome back to the Carl Jackson show again. uh, We are joined by my guest, Jay Christian Adams. He is the founder of Public Interest Legal Foundation. You can find his organization at publicinterestlegal.org. That is publicinterestlegal.org. 
Uh, they played a huge role in the Supreme Court decision uh, earlier this week, the 9-0 to zero decision against Colorado, who were trying to ban or remove Trump from the ballot. And of course, uh, the Supreme Court stepped in because Super Tuesday was, was as of yesterday, and literally uh, the state tried to, the Supreme Court, along with the Secretary of State, uh, they were uh, talking about how Donald Trump was an existential threat to democracy. Meanwhile, uh, they were literally trying to make sure that Colorado voters would not have a choice in, in the Republican primary. Absolutely insane to me. But this is where we are with the Democrat Party. Uh, so very. Uh, so it was a huge decision. Uh, and thank God for people like Jay Christian Adams of the Public Interest Legal Foundation uh, that play a role in stopping that type of nonsense. Speaking of stopping um, some nonsense here, uh, Christian, I, a couple of things that I want to talk to you about uh, the Fonnie Willis case, the the uh, the case in Atlanta or in Fulton County seems to be falling apart. I also want to get your take on election integrity going forward. How are uh, election integrity measures looking heading into 2024? What would you suggest to make sure that we have free and fair elections? I know you've been instrumental on that particular issue, but let's start with uh, the the case in Fulton County, you have the DA Fannie Willis. Uh, I guess she's. I, I thought it was Fannie Willis for years, and all of a sudden it's Fannie Willis. Uh, so, Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade, uh, as well, the prosecutor that was hired by the DA to prosecute uh, to prosecute the former president, and these guys were involved uh, in an affair. Obviously, for it's being exposed now for years before. Uh, give us your take on that, because, I mean, every day I feel like there's news dripping out about the corruption of Fulton County and this uh, D.A. Uh, uh, Fannie Willis. Imagine that I'm in some conservative Republican county as a prosecutor and I hire somebody under these circumstances who gets paid hourly for more work. Every every bit of work they do, they get more money. And then and then I unleash them to go prosecute Democrats. And so every new Democrat they can charge, they get more money because they're being paid wow. hourly. That's exactly the situation that I'm describing. So the prosecutor has a financial incentive to do work and broaden the charges and, and charge more people with bigger charges. And so the, a financial incentive is created here, both for the boyfriend, but also for Fonnie Willis, because she's apparently on the take too getting money from the boyfriend. You know, it's, it's a big circle of cash. It goes out of the government coffers to the boyfriend and back to uh, Fannie Willis for vacations. Look, if this was anywhere else other than Fulton County or maybe San Francisco or LA, this case would have been dismissed. The, the prosecutor fearing a bar complaint, uh, a bar complaint, their, their you know, state bar would have dropped these charges ASAP and run into the forest with their tail between their legs. Not in Fulton County, apparently. And, and so, look, here's what I think could happen. The court who's looking at this in the next couple of days could just assign this to a new prosecutor, you know, to, to pr pursue the charges and to decide whether or not they continue. A new prosecutor has a, a duty of justice to decide whether to continue. The judge can punt, and I think he will. OK. All right. So th that, that's a uh, that's actually where I wanted to go with that. I, let me let me let me ask this. Let me let me follow up here. Now, isn't it also true, though, if there is uh, allegations, rumors or, or, you know, any type of evidence that perhaps there was corruption or uh, other people within the office knew what was going on in regards to this relationship between Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis? I, I, I mean, can't the entire case uh, be dismissed? Because there was a headline I read just the other day. Again, I'm speaking to my guest, J. Christian Adams of the Public Interest Legal dot org, Public Interest Legal uh, dot org. But the, apparently one of the prosecutors in uh, Fannie Willis's office is getting ready to testify against her uh, because she's testifying that. She knew of the relationship uh, all along uh, yeah. between Nathan Wade and, and, uh, uh, and Fannie Willis. And frankly, so did the divorce attorney, uh, Terrence Bradley, I believe is his name. And they had a conversation about it. Yeah. Carl, let's assume it's even worse than that. OK. It still doesn't mean the case is automatically dismissed. Hmm. Okay. It's up to the judge 
to do it. And my hunch is the judge doesn't want this all falling on his shoulders. Because if I'm not mistaken, this judge is elected in Fulton County. I might be yes. wrong about that. No, you're right. So he has to face an election. So the smarter play for the judge, now just remember I predicted this. Okay. If I get this right, have me back on the show. If I get it wrong, <laughs> never call me again. My <laughs> prediction is the judge is going to push this to a new prosecutor mm. and like, you know, from the sticks and basically put that new prosecutor in charge. And that new prosecutor has the power to dismiss everything. If he decides his case is beyond hope, totally corrupt, the new prosecutor can dismiss the case. But I believe the judge is going to punt this and, and let the new prosecutor decide. That's probably why it's taking so long for the judge to rule is he's trying to find a new prosecutor. Wow. Otherwise, he could have ruled days ago. Just remember I said it. I might be wrong. And if so, I'll never see you again. Now, listen, I, I, I absolutely love that take. It is fascinating, uh, fascinating to me. D does the prosecutor have to be in the same in Fulton County? I, look, you 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 that's a deep dive into Georgia law. Generally speaking, the answer is no, that a okay. judge in this case has what's called equitable powers uh, to to, you know, do what is right and. I, look, look at the case in South Carolina, which, by the way, I went to the law school with the murderer, Alex Murdaugh. He was huh. my law school classmate. No we way. We did a whole show on that one. Uh, and so uh, in South Carolina, you have judges appointed specially for certain things and prosecutors appointed. That was a, a specially appointed prosecutor in South Carolina. Now, I'm not saying Georgia is exactly the same, but they probably are. Hmm. Okay. All right, man. I am going to have to have you back for that. Alex Murdoch. What did it throw something in there? That is very, very interesting. Okay. Again, I'm speaking to Jay Christian Adams, public interest, legal uh, foundation, public interest, legal.org, public interest, legal.org. Um, Jay Christian Adams does a lot of work when it comes to election integrity. I've had him on before. And one of the things that he had written about and revealed to me, if you want to know what illegal aliens are voting in your county, city, so on, et cetera, you can virtually go to the DMV, find out, and make sure that these people are held accountable so that they don't vote. Listen, uh, Christian, we have wide open borders. It is obvious to me or apparent to me that this administration is importing Democrats. We just found out the other day 320 thousand illegal aliens that Joe Biden and his administration has literally flown over the border when they requested asylum in their own home country. Uh, this is absolutely insane. Election integrity headed up to 2024. What are you concerned about? What should Republicans be doing? Well, the biggest concern is states not following the law, their own laws. And that's something Public Interest Legal Foundation is going to be watching closely we have sued and won multiple cases around the country when states don't follow their own election laws. So that's number one concern, because that's what happened in 2020 is no, hey, what, who cares about the law, right? We don't need no stinking law. Well, we can't have a repeat of that. Um, the other thing I'm concerned about is, uh, and, and you hit the nail on the head, the border invasion, I think, is a long-term play. It's more about the children of these illegal uh, border crossers than it is about them. We've collected a lot of data from foreign nationals voting. You can go read our reports at publicinterestlegal.org. Reports like motor voter at 30, reports like safe spaces, reports like Garden State Gotcha, reports like stealing the vote. All of these document non-citizens getting on the voter rolls by name. We know their names. We get the records. And what one thing stands out, Carl, is that it tends to be green card holders. It tends to be student visa holders, not so much uh, people who are on the run from a border crossing. So I guess that's a silver lining. It's not much of one, but at least. But the more dangerous thing is, like I said at the beginning of the of the question, this is a long term play for the next generation. Yeah, and, and perhaps that is why uh, Merrick Garland came out, the head of the DOJ, and said, listen, these voter ID laws are absolutely crazy. We shouldn't, <laughs> It shouldn't require voter IDs. It, that actually is a silver lining. Uh, we only have a, lit, a minute left here, Christian, but that actually is a silver lining. Uh, if, if green card holders are applying for driver's licenses, you can find them. You can make sure that they're not voting. Uh, so the play, I think you're right, is for uh, is for the children and with with Joe Biden right now. They love to use as many of these illegals as possible uh, to uh, to try to win elections. What say you? 
Well, uh, some will slip through. Uh, we need better. Uh, we need a better verification of citizenship on the front end. We need the federal government to open up what's called the save database. That didn't even get open during the Trump administration. It's the list of all the aliens that the federal government has that states have a right to, but aren't being given it. Mm, okay. All right. In in uh, in ten seconds here. Um, going forward into twenty twenty four, what what are you expecting? Well, I'm expecting a better election than 2020, and that's good. good news. All right. That is good news. All right. I'll leave it there. Jay Christian Adams, publicinterestlegal.org. I appreciate you joining me, man. You take care.